All right, all right. Welcome to the BCS Reveal episode. It's the first week of the BCS rankings, and I wanted to do a separate video just for this uh, particular situation so we can look at a few things. We're going to go into some stats. We're going to check some awards, some finalists, and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and get into it. Number one is Ohio State, followed by Florida and Texas. So we're going to focus on these three teams. They're very close. As a matter of fact, Texas and Florida are only separated by, what's that? 17 hundredths of a point. So that could literally flip from week to week, even if they both stay undefeated. So we're going to keep an eye on these three teams, Ohio State, Florida, and Texas. Should they all three go undefeated? It's going to be real interesting to see who gets a nod for that second spot. West Virginia is a distant, distant fourth. I don't think a tenth of a point can be made up without one of these teams losing. Maybe they need, they might need two teams to lose for West Virginia to have a chance. West Virginia, no question, they need to go undefeated. They have to go undefeated just to get a sniff of a chance to get in. There's Georgia with one loss. They need a bunch of help. Clemson is actually seven and zero, oh, and they're 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 a ton of their poll averages. I wonder why they're so far back. Maybe strength of schedule. Maybe their strength of schedule is not good enough. I wonder where I can check that out. But there's Oklahoma sitting at seven. Of course, we lost to them earlier in the season. Our conference rival USC sitting at number eight at five and one. We have a big game coming up with them in about two weeks. So definitely be on the lookout for that when that game is on the road as well. We're going to just keep scrolling down, and we see Washington sitting at number 20. Our beloved Huskies, no chance in a national championship. But we have our eyes on that Pac-10 crown. That's where our focus is on. Let's have a look at some award semifinalists. We're going to go through this real quick. As a matter of fact, no, let's start with the Heisman. You can see that list has changed since the beginning of the year. Big Tim Tebow is no longer on the list. And a few other guys have dropped out. Um, who am I thinking about? Crabtree is not on the list. We got Jeremy Macklin, wide receiver out of Missouri. Todd Beckman, quarterback. Graham Harrell, Crabtree's teammate out of Texas Tech. James Davis, big halfback. And Cullen Harper, two Clemson teammates, running out that Heisman list. Let's check out some award semifinalists. We'll go through that real quick. There you see, I'll see, let you guys check that out. That's the Maxwell. What's that, Bitneric? I want to say that's the best linebacker in the nation. Two Penn State guys leading the way. Notable name, Laurinaitis, on there as well. David Bryan Award, best quarterback. Graham Harrell, he's got a chance to take several awards this season. He's having a nice season. He's got 38 total TDs already with several games to play. Let's scroll down and check that out. Tim Tebow is at least in the mix. Fell out of Heisman mix, but he's still in the mix for the Davey O'Brien. Doak Walker Award. There your award semi-finalist right there. Best wide receiver, Macklin leading the list. Of course, he's also leading the Heisman list. Wow, Crabtree's teammates on the best wide receiver list. Crabtree is nowhere to be found. I wonder what happened to him. Best tight end, Gresham. Gresham, I'm sorry. Leading to the list. Of course, we have no players on, on any of this, I, I would assume. Best offensive lineman. Big guy out of Arizona leading the way, right tackle. Trying to see. Oh, look what we got. We got one of our guys. He's actually pretty. He's having a great season. I don't know if you guys remember. I can't remember what game that was. I want to say it was the mm, the Oregon or the Stanford game where it was a goal line situation and man that pancake block looked so sweet on the replay when um, our halfback ran it in the end zone. I mean he destroyed that defensive lineman. So it's nice to see one of our guys get us a recognition. He's a senior so it's going to be a big loss in the middle of our line. So we must address that through recruiting. Wow, he's actually lead, leading the Remington Award list. I'm assuming that's for the best center. Man, that would be so sweet to get that award. We're going to fight for that. 
Not much we could do with an offensive lineman, but let's hope he gets it. The Lombardi, I want to say, somebody correct me, the Lombardi Award is awarded to the best interior lineman or different, the best interior defensive player or best defensive lineman. Okay, yeah, okay. That's what it looks like. That's the Lombardi list there. Best linebacker. Okay, what's the difference between Big Narek and the best linebacker? All right, we're not going to go through that. I know the Thorpe is the best cornerback, so we'll scroll down. You know Patrick Peterson, he was a freshman this year. I think I adjusted his stats for this dynasty. I can't remember if I did or not. Patrick Chung. Okay, so the Thorpe is the best defensive back, not the best cornerback. All right, that's cool. Best kicker, Groza. Oh, here's our guy right at the bottom of the list. That's nice. And the best punter. All right, what else can we have a look at? Let's check the players, players of the week. AC Pac-10 Week 8. Both of our... We had two players. That was Chris Stevens, our linebacker. He had a big game, eight tackles, a sack, an interception, and two forced fumbles. Unfortunately, we didn't recover either of those fumbles that he forced. And J.R. Hasty had a really good game, 16 carries, 160 yards, three TDs, three catches for a whopping 72 yards. So he balled out. He had a great game. We can't get Locker to have um, a good game. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm throwing interceptions. Uh, he had that great game against Oregon where he ran. He looked like Lamar Jackson. He ran for almost 300 yards, but since then, he's just been real, real average, and our defense has been outstanding for most of the time this season. But we can't get him going. If we can get him going, we can we can be pretty dominant. We'll go check the conference standings before we move to recruiting. Their USC, I guess they have the tie break on us. They have them at the top of the list. But we have a chance to break that tie once we play them in two weeks. Our next, next game is at Notre Dame. I'm sorry, Notre Dame comes to us. Not a conference game. It's important, but not as important as these conference games. So there's the rest of the conference right there. Stanford in the cellar this year. And our state rival is nowhere to be found as well. They're going five in the conference. So they might play, try to play spoiler with us at the end of the season. All right, let's go ahead and head to recruiting. Big news on the recruiting front. After that huge, huge win against Oregon State, remember Dan Oliver and David Fisher were both visiting for that game, and somehow, some way, we were able to leapfrog Fresno State, who had a slight lead on us, and we were able to leapfrog them, and we got big Dan Oliver to sign with us. This is a huge, huge gift for us. I'm telling you guys, we needed this guy. One of our tackles is a senior, and he's leaving. I predict this kid is going to start for us next season. I don't know if he's going to start at right tackle or left tackle, but he will start next season. Well, I don't want to speak too soon. We'll see what we do in offseason recruiting, but he's got a great chance to start. David Fisher is probably going to be in a rotation next year. I can't promise he's going to start, but he should see some playing time. All right, guys, unfortunately, that's the good news, but the bad news is a ton of guys decided not to uh, continue to consider us as an option for their education and student athlete status or whatever you want to, however you want to say it. I don't even know what to say about that, but either way, we have Dustin Patterson here. We just put all of our recruiting hours on this one guy left because everybody else has dropped us off their list. That's fine. We'll see how that goes. He's a two-star athlete. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not an athlete. Outside linebacker. And we're in a... I'm not going to say a tight race with USC, but let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. All right, let's check and see if there's anything else to check. Let's check some stats real quick, and we're going to be done with this. And I'm going to start working on that next... That Notre Dame video. Let's check some season stats for our guys. There's Jake Locker, a very average season, only 57% completion percentage, 
11 TDs, nine interceptions, just a just a very average season. He's been sacked 10 times. I'm very unhappy with my quarterback play. Running the ball, we've been doing pretty well. Very juicy averages there. We're not doing a good job of getting our backups carries, so we need to start working on that. We don't want guys transferring because they're upset about playing time. That's another great thing about these PS2 games. Guys will transfer because you don't play them. Receiving Goodwin, he's only got 33 receptions. We got to get him another yard. <laughs> we definitely got to get Goodwin another yard, man. We got to come up off that number right there, baby. Oh, no. So, yeah, you, as you guys can see, we have no trust in our in our receivers. There's our leading receiver, Goodwin, with 33 receptions. Look who's in, in um, second place, our running back. So we just don't have enough confidence in our receivers, guys. Um, I see those guys drop a lot of balls. I'm not doing a great job of throwing the ball, so we need to improve in our passing game. That's a huge weakness, and I have to admit that. There's Garcia, the Remington leader, semifinalist. Um, he's in the lead right now for that award. There's Stevens with 48 tackles. He's having a hell of a season, great season. He's going to be sorely missed after the season. Yeah, but that's, a, that's about it. We're going to go ahead and close this episode out. I didn't write a script for this one. I just shot from the hip. So I'm just going to run it the way it is, stuttering and all. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate the support so far. It's been a great pleasure producing these videos. And the feedback has been outstanding. I, I, I really, really appreciate it. And we're going to keep it moving. We're going to. I have some other games on deck that I want to try and focus, uh, I'm sorry, feature on the channel. So stay tuned. If you like the video, go ahead and um, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video on the Notre Dame, or Notre Dame is coming to us. Next video. Later.